We do have one item, uh, we didn't get to the uh, number nine, the last, uh, the budget itself. So, uh, Sean? Yep. I'll just continue, we'll just wrap up item nine here, and that is, um, what is before you that you have in your packet, and also up on the screen, um, is a draft, I want to underline draft, implementation budget. Um, you will actually notice that the budget that was included in the packet has a total of two point uh, five million for startup costs. The budget that you have up on the screen actually is a little less at 2.293 I believe and that's because uh, apologies I went back and sharpened the pencil and realized that uh, in this budget that's in the packet we had included all of the customers for enrollment rather than a phasing strategy which we discussed here just a few minutes ago. So that reduces your upfront customer notification costs significantly. Um, and you will see that that's, you know, the marketing and customer enrollment uh, costs for the program are pretty high. So um, I won't go through all of this in great detail unless you want me to, other than to say this estimate uh, is consistent with the estimate that was included in the technical study. However, what we did is we went back and reallocated some of the line items to be uh, consistent with current practice, current experience, um, I will say that Lean Energy and I am working with multiple CCAs uh, in PG&E territory right now as they're going through this exact same process, and so I'm pretty familiar with what things are costing these days. Um, and this is the amount that would be sought in the startup line of credit that we'll be discussing in the next line item. So this is just the implementation budget. It does not include the cost of power. It does not include data management and call center services. And the reason for that is that most data management companies do not begin charging fees to the agency until the program is operational and revenues are uh, have commenced. So they don't begin accruing expenses until you go operational. That's why they're not in this implementation budget. Um, it does not include this budget does not include the what we call the internal soft costs or the staff costs that have already been incurred by the County of Santa Cruz and will be incurred by uh, the county and others that choose to help out through this implementation phase. It does not include debt service that would become part of your operations budget. A full operations budget will be brought back to this board um, once we've you know figured out what your load is and we were just discussing that relative to market pricing, rates, and all that good stuff. That comes later. This is simply what the hard cost, we anticipate the hard cost will be to get your program and your agency up and running. Yes, sir. So um, the uh, staff report uh, recommends that the CEO and treasurer in place to review this budget. I assume it's the end of the budget that you're referring to. But Correct. Yes. But, and then it says return to the board for final <coughs> the intent there is to return to the operations board and then subsequent to the policy <coughs> board for recommendation because I think that this issue is a very important one. Uh, we struggled with a few of the points here with the credit line, et cetera, and the budget. So I think it'd be, uh, you know, I would suggest that if that's not the intent, that we make that the intent of you know, the op yes. operations board. So the plan of action is, and a lot of this is going to be contingent upon all of your goodwill to meet over the summer, because that is another reality that I'm, we're now becoming aware of when people go out of town and all that. So the intention here is that we wanted to serve this up as an informational item today, just so you know what it looks like and the components of what implementation looks like. And then um, the interim CEO or permanent CEO hopefully comes on ASAP by <coughs> July um, and takes a look at this as well. Goes back to the operations board. It comes back before a joint policy and operations board meeting for approval. But ultimately, the policy board has jurisdiction over the budget. So the policy board would approve this um, as well as later on approving really what, what is the bigger deal, which is your operating budget for year one through. So do you have to wait to and managers review it, make sure Yes, it doesn't require. Yeah. Sure. There's lots of stuff that happens 
parallel to this, so that is possible. It is not an action item for today, however. Question. Mr. Chair, quick question. Um, I see that we do have some monies set aside for uh, advertising and other stuff. Um, we really want to reach out to our, all three of our communities. Like, pick, if we can pick vendors, can we make sure that's within those three counties and maybe you know distribute the money to all three counties? I know because we are a cooperation of counties and cities, we kind of want to show good faith with our budget. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions? Um, I want to, um, I'm very interested in making sure that the public has access to what we're doing, so uh, clearly there's some public here today. Um, and I also noticed that we are being videoed. That's my best side. Um, <laughs> and I want to thank, um, I want to thank uh, Ginny for making that arrangement and for um, uh, Armstrong Productions for being here to do this. Um, I'm wondering, I don't see that that is perhaps, um, contemplated in this budget. I'm not sure how much we should allocate, but it seems to me that having the policy board and the meetings of the operations board uh, videoed, I don't know if it's possible to stream them, but certainly to archive those meetings so that the public who's not able to be here in person can uh, follow the discussion uh, would be great. If that, could be that is contemplated in the board meeting expense line item, which got bumped to 15000 in anticipation of oh, those kinds of changes. Okay. Super. Thank you. Yes. I am sorry if this is nitpicking. On the advertising campaign, it's 250 grand for print, social, paid, and earned. And I, I'm just suggesting that maybe those be parceled out so we know how much is print, how much is social, earned media. You know, it doesn't really cost you anything. But it'd be nice if that was parceled out in the future. And my other question is I don't see advertising and community outreach on the timeline, so I want to ask when does the advertising and community outreach officially begin? Great question. So a lot of it has commenced. Um, and so the next big public push um, will depend on getting your vendor or vendors in place who will support that, A. Um, and generally, we like to have them in place and really ramping up the advertising six months prior to program launch is the estimate. You could start earlier if you wish. And I see I was incorrect. It is shown on the, on the Gantt line. It's uh, November of this year, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, between now and November of this year, when the advertising campaign has a big start push, um, will there be materials coming from staff that we can begin sharing with our communities if we have community events <coughs> between now and then, so that we're, we're all on the same page, giving the same messages, same answers to questions, and hopefully getting people excited about the rollout, but using a proper information to do that. Yeah, so what's critical here, um, Sorry to harp on it, but it's critical that you get your line of, of credit in place in order to begin to do all this stuff. So um, first we gotta, we got to get money in the bank in order to then get all of this out. But there is some good collateral we already have, and one of the uh, very next things will be to update the website and all of that. So unfortunately, there's a linearity to this that has to start with capital. Thank you very much. Any other questions for the board? Any uh, comments from the public? <laughs> okay, we will move on to item number 10, uh, discussion of the interim CEO position and authorization to proceed with the recruitment process. Ahita Patel from Santa Cruz County will make that presentation. And if everybody could speak up uh, as loudly as they can, so maybe stand up as you're speaking, that'd be fine. <laughs> You don't have to, but go ahead. I think, I think you'll be able to hear me. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, and we are looking forward to working with you all. So this morning, we have two staff recommendations before you. The first is to authorize a search for an interim contract CEO, and the second is to appoint a subcommittee of the operations board that will evaluate candidates and recommend, make a recommendation to the policy board. So just to check, can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. The approach that we are suggesting here is to hire the to hire the interim contract CEO is based on two elements. It's the timing and the resources that are currently available. The timing is very critical, as you just talked about. The goal is to serve the customers by the spring of 2018. And Santa Cruz County has indicated that they would like to take a step back on, in the daily leadership. So we do need to bring somebody in very quickly. 
an interim CEO could be here by mid-July, August, because we would fast track a process that allows that. A permanent CEO search could take up to five months. In terms of resources, the permanent CEO salary would also need to include some benefits, and currently this agency is not set up to offer retirement or health care options. If we stop to also put that into play, there could be a further delay. So a contract CEO is really salary, and Santa Cruz County does believe that they could fund that much easier. So those are the two critical elements, timing and resources, that we do need to consider. Should your board decide that you do want to embark on the, the interim contract CEO process, what we think that would look like is we would put out a request for qualifications. We would do a two-week posting in mid-May, May 15th to May 26th. The posting would include publications in local and professional organizations. We would also make an effort to outreach to individuals who have utility or CCA experience. In early June, we would like to have the subcommittee evaluate these letters of resume and the interest letters, and then we, plan we are planning for a recommendation to the policy board on July 5th. And meanwhile, in the staff report, what we have suggested is that this, an interim contract would be in the range of 20000 to 25000 per month. And that was a preliminary number that we came up with, but Santa Cruz County will do a complete salary survey to, to land on a number that would be appropriate. So with that, I would conclude my comments. I'd ask Sean if Sean, is there anything you need to add? There's one thing, uh, the, you know, the July 5th date, I think it's going to be a problem with coming right after July 4th. It's going to be a problem for you, Mr. Chair. It's going to be a problem for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that, the date. I mean, I don't know if we can move it. If, we move it up to the end of June. I know that everybody's in their budgets, hearings, and all, but I think they're around uh, June 28th or 9th or something like that. So I think the fifth was just something yeah. we gauged based on when we thought we were meeting again. So certainly, I think we can come up with something that would work. For okay. I, I'm thinking July, June 28th or 9th. If people keep that in their mind, but we'll go from there. See if we can go make ahead. that. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible. Mr. Mr. So. Uh, I support staff's recommendation. I do think that there's well, one minor caveat or thing I would like to point out is, is that I think the JPA calls for a nomination from the operations board for CEO. So I think you know, staff would like to have a subcommittee of operations to help kind of advise the recruitment process. You know, we can talk about that, but I think ultimately the recommendation for a CEO needs to come from the full ops board and that doesn't even come from just a subcommittee. Sorry, that, yeah. that is absolutely yes, that would be the idea. Okay. Yes. I had a question about, you said you're going to be open for two weeks, period. A request for qualifications, yes. Uh, I mean, understand we're trying to get this hired really quick. That seems really quick, really quick <laughs> to survive from my experience that to get the outreach that, that you wanted to do, unless you're putting stuff out there ahead of time. Um, because it's critical that we get out all the, the appropriate publications and get the outreach out there. And I'm, just raise that two weeks seems really tight. It does, and I would assume that if your board were to approve this, our work begins this afternoon. And the goal would be to line up those postings to delve in and figure out where we would do all of that and immediately do it. And again, that is actually the reason why there is that we need to decide if we want to do the interim or a permanent, because if we were doing a permanent, it would be quite a large surge, and it's exactly what you said. There's so much to do. So in the contract situation, we believe that we could do an adequate posting for two weeks, a very aggressive outreach, and we could get it done. Of course, if at the end of those two weeks, we did not feel that we had enough letters of interest or resumes, then we could always consider that. But this is really just the initial approach to keep everything on a timeline because it is so critical with Santa Cruz stepping back a little bit, you do need that leadership immediately. Yes, Mr. Chair, Please. could I suggest that an alternative approach? That um, we contract with one of the counties or the cities to be the host agency for the CEO. That way you can hire an individual, you can offer them the full public sector benefit package, healthcare, PERS, and so forth. 
And then for the interim, we hire an engineering firm. And so we, we get a firm on board, much like you hire a contract attorney firm to be your, your city council member. And that way, um, we can start immediately both with getting an engineering firm on board to be your interim CEO, and then we can immediately begin advertising for a permanent CEO and offer them the full public sector package. So you can probably have the permanent individual on board in about six months. And then once that individual's on board and they set up all the infrastructure for the JPA to hire the employees and so forth, then the contract with the, with the, the city or the county could end and they could become a full-time employee of the JPA. Couple thoughts. I think definitely worth discussing. There are a couple things embedded in that, and there's so there's some uh, decisions that your board will have to make. One that you mentioned is whether or not your CEO and frankly your staff will be hired on as public employees. So what other CCAs have done um, have instead of going with a defined uh, contribution model, which is sort of a public pension but typical but model. Benefit. Excuse me, defined benefit. Thank you. Instead, they've gone to a defined contribution. Thank you for correcting me. A defined contribution model so that, um, so that A, the CCAs are, are not paying pension, and also B, that they are able to recruit fairly high level talent at more private sector uh, salaries because you're having to compete in order to get talent through the door. So that, that's a decision that hasn't yet been made by this board. Um, so that's one element there. And um, the only other thing I would say is an engineering firm could certainly respond to an RFQ that was put out, whether that was two weeks or three weeks. I think the idea here with the interim is to have somebody who really understands, hopefully with CCA experience, startup experience, to be honest. And it's not me. Um, so, but just have someone who can really bring all of the the leadership to bear when Santa Cruz County needs to step back is what I understand. And that that gives time for the longer term permanent CEO to be posted uh, and for all of that to happen. So this is to underline an interim situation. Could be filled by an engineering firm, could be filled by an individual. Is that responsive? Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the point whether or not we want to have this be a, a conventional public sector and offer those benefits, I think we should make that decision soon. Yeah. Because that's going to affect that. And it won't just, affect the contract employee. But the contract employee, it's very difficult to get somebody to move here for six months. They've got to rent a house. So you're going to have all those costs associated with it that may be somewhat mitigated by having those are the problems. Mr. Chair, if I may, I, I, I like what Lou's saying, but I would also recommend or suggest that we look at doing an interim. If we're only doing an interim for two, three, four months, just contract with another CC or at least look into that because the expertise is already there. And you're not going to get somebody to move here, like Lou said, for two, three, four months for an interim. But if we can do an interim contract with another CCA just temporarily to get us going, I think that might be a good idea to look at. Mr. Chair, do we have anybody in our staff right now that can take over the responsibility temporarily? I think there, uh, there, this is a very technical um, area that we need somebody with some very good experience in the uh, energy field. And there are individuals out there who would do this consulting. So there are engineering firms and there are individuals who would be willing to come for, you know, in the Bay Area and we could do a six month to a year contract for that interim, whatever, however long it takes us to get a permanent individual on. And so that's why we were suggesting doing this interim contract because of the expertise involved and also that it's going to be a, more than a full-time job. This is going to be, somebody's going to have to be, you know, quite a bit of uh, time uh, doing this, this field. Okay. Yeah, I would echo Carlos's point. Um, I, I don't think we have time to waste. I think they, in the ability of the county of Santa Cruz to execute on this documentation of consultants on our team that's, that's really kicked this off. Um, I think there's qualified people out there that'll, that'll jump on this enthusiastically. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for a professional that they can handle these kinds of things. Uh, you know, if we come up short of qualified cap, uh, folks, then we'll come back and we'll look at other options, whether that's the, the contract with an existing CCA or, or, or a county 
or hire Ray Corpus to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever the case, uh, there's other alternatives, but I think I think this is the right track. Okay. I just have a quick, and I agree with what you're saying. There are experts out there that are that are uh, what we call boomers, and they're they're going around looking for this job. One of the things I might suggest is if you make that a your own job, that one your job, it's going to save you money because you're going to get the top guy that wants to come through for a year, and that gives you a lot of time to come up with a perfect fit for a permit. It, it may be, yeah, but I think if you make that a little longer term, you're going to attract a lot more people than you would be in six months or three months. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would want to put a timeline on it. Uh, but to see the quality that we get, and who we, we get, um, I, I'd like to try to make it a little tighter than that. So, I'd be prepared to move staff's recommendation with the only modification being the uh, form a subcommittee to help staff with the process, but then the operations board makes the yes. recommendation to the candidates. I think the advantage is to the, the flexibility that we have by doing this outside of one of our agencies with BERS is probably well worth pursuing at this point. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. So did we get, uh, did, was there anybody from the public want to comment on this? Yes. Well, I just had one comment. Just, uh, just be cautious in terms of the setting of this, because you actually have a pool of, for instance, retired city managers and CEOs. They're very interested or in the first system of coming back in, but they are limited to 1,000 hours a year. So if you want to tap into that pool of administrative uh, expertise <coughs> setting up the agency, um, it really does have to be limited you know, to a half, half year half position. Year. But don't, don't close the door. Mm -hmm. see, there are firms out there. Mm -hmm. in yeah, Andy Shemakoron from Aromas. Um, when you uh, go out for either the temporary or the permanent CEO, I think there should be a role of uh, some kind of community advisory board input in the selection process and in um, defining what kind of CEO you're really looking for. My experience, I served on the Aroma San Juan School Board and I've served on many union boards and often what you end up with when you have a chief executive in government agencies or public agency is a person who's not necessarily that responsive to what I would call the rank and file, the average person. They're more used to talking on a rarefied level to the folks who are their decision makers around them. And it leads to a disconnect with the real priorities of the public on this score. And I think from the very beginning, if you want to set this on the right course, you involve the public in defining the role and in, and you look very specifically for a unique kind of CEO for both interim and permanent that's ready to work with a broad public with very diverse communities. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address us on this? Okay. Um, Call for the question, Mr. Chair. We have a, we, we have we have a motion and a second. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The motion. Go ahead, Jane. Yeah. So the motion was to accept staff's recommendation with a minor change to the, that we made. It would be a subsequent motion, I guess, appoint a uh, subcommittee of the operations board to assist staff with the recruitment process, but that the candidate evaluation and recommendation um, would come from the full operations board for a decision by the policy. Second. The second by the change. Question. Would that committee be appointed today? I would assume if the motion passes, then the next action would be to look for volunteers. volunteers and yeah. And I have a clarifying question. It sounded to me from uh, what staff said that, because I, mean, I also share the concern that two weeks is an awfully short period of time. I know we're in a hurry. But it sounded as though staff might actually be able to stretch that to slightly over two weeks, um, or I wasn't clear. I think if we would need that, we would need to come back to your board at least. You're going to start advertising today. We're starting. We're going to start working today, That's so to get I that mean. going. Okay. Thank you. So, in the motion, are we recommending that the advertising be for a non purge contract employee, mm -hmm. and for what period of time? But I think that was still kind of hanging out there. 
So what's the advertisement of that individual? So in the, what we're doing is a request for qualifications. We will not, we're doing it as a contract, so we are not needing to mention anything about the retirement at this point. What we would, what I would suggest is that we leave that open and not exclude those who may have the expertise who may be retiree just to allow the pool to be a larger pool. But that doesn't mean that when you make a job offer, you have to make it to somebody that is a retiree, right? And you can, we can do it such that somebody meets the criteria that yep. this organization so We need to see the candidate pool. I would suggest not limiting it at this point. Okay, we have a I think, I, I agree and I'll support the motion to get us going, but I think that the very next board meeting we need to establish our interest in whether it's a personal agency or whether it is going to be functioning as a non-PERS public sector institution. And it needs to be defined fairly early and I think the next board meeting is the appropriate place to talk about that. Because that drives the budget, and it drives the perspective, and it drives the recruitment. So I think that needs to be determined next meeting. So Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that would be something you need to do when you make that permanent CEO hire, and for the interim, it's not as critical, but correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Right, and that is part of the reason that I think the interim idea came up was that you know you didn't have to jam through a very big long-term discussion. Um, you could hire under contract while all of these other critical decisions were being made. Um, because the, the only and the reason that I went a little white when you said that was that um, there's a, a number of other things that this decision affects other elements of um, employment policy that would be part of the scope of work for this interim CEO along with HR or whatever to develop a whole body of employment policy and um, benefits packages including the PERS question. So the idea would be that it would be part of a bigger picture and come to the board first probably to the operations board and then, then to the policy board. So this interim approach allows us to move ahead and take the time we need to get all the rest of those things in place. So I'm not sure, to be honest, that it would come back in June, but it will. It will be ASA. Um, Mr. Chair, let me just throw in one thing. If the board today is asking the board to come back as an agenda to talk about, I think that that's important that this agency start with listening to the board's perspective that we should talk about. That. So I think it should be agenda for decision. Well, I think we need to have at least a first meeting where it's agendized, where well, we can those that are on the board are coming, thinking about it, and thinking in terms of their perspective of which agency they would like to form. We can do that. that uh, we can do that on item number 15. It's what the, uh, uh, the request for future agenda items. Yeah. I think that'd be the right way. And I, Mr. Chair, I'm going. I'll build on what Mr. Smith said. I think it's important we figure out which counties and which cities and when they go dark because setting up a policy board meeting when <coughs> you guys are out may not work on that timeline. That's item 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, have a, we have a motion and a second on the floor. I'm going to call for the motion. All those in, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered unanimously. Okay, we will now go to. Uh, I think oh, a subsequent oh, excuse oh, right, action right. would be to appoint a subcommittee of oh, I'm sorry. the oh, operations board. Yeah. <laughs> are, there there, are there any volunteers? How many are you looking for? Three. Well, I think three is reasonable. It can't, it can't be more than a quorum of right. the operations. It needs to be three. So it can't be three. Just raise your hand. Three? Yeah. Okay. We have Carlos. Ray, Jamie. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll put my name on that. This, this is operations. operations. This is operations. operations. Can we have? Can we have? <laughs> we have Ray, Jamie, me, and Charles. There's four of us. That's four. Okay. That's fine. That's not a problem. Yeah, four. Yeah, four. Four. Okay. Do we have that? Okay. Everybody down. It's fine. Thank you. Good job. Okay. 
All right, now we will uh, move to item number 11. Uh, report, a re report on an authorized next steps for credit and banking negotiation. Edith Driscoll, our treasurer, tax collector. Well, she's a lot more things, but yeah. Santa Cruz County. She's, uh, <laughs> uh, good morning, while it's still morning. Um, again, I am the auditor controller and treasurer tax collector for Santa Cruz County. Um, I'm hoping you can all hear me. Um, just to provide some basic details regarding this item and to review the recommendations. Um, an RFP was issued. The scope of the RFP was to seek proposals to provide funding for startup costs, comprehensive banking services, as well as to provide a line of credit and or medium term, term fixed loans as necessary. A total of three responses were received. Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority, Bank of the West, and River City Bank. The county formed an evaluation committee made up of myself, staff from Santa Cruz County, staff from the city of Capitola. <coughs> the evaluation committee um, selected River, City's Bank, River City Bank's proposal. It was determined to be complete and of good quality and meets the basic needs set forth in the RFP. Recommendations <coughs> as reflected in the board packet. One, accept report and direct appropriate staff to begin discussions with River City Bank to establish credit and banking services. Two, direct staff to develop credit guarantee documents with River City Bank and primary credit guarantors and prepare standard agreements to support the credit guarantors. Three, direct staff to return to the operations board in August with final credit terms and agreements for approval. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Um, any comments from the board? Yes. Yes. Um, it mentioned the Bank of the West was incomplete, and so they were declared non-responsive. Then it says <coughs> only one responsive proposal was received. So was the Salinas Valley Solid Resource Waste Authority not responsive? They chose to respond to only one part of the RFP. <coughs> so were they deemed non-responsive? Well, sort of. Yes. I'm just saying, what was the disposition or the reason that Salinas Valley was not fit? They were not non-responsive. Um, the RFP allowed for different types of responses, and they responded to only one area of the RFP. <coughs> Bank of the West responded to one area of the RFP and left the second area for negotiation, and the third was River City Bank, which was the most complete. Okay. So Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority was not chosen for startup capital because of I worked on someone else here. I, I wasn't an evaluator, but um, <laughs> um, I will speak. I'm Peter Dellis with uh, County Economic Development. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm <coughs> suffering from a cold. Um, but uh, there were three responses. In order to qualify for the full banking relationship, respondents were required to respond to all three um, components of the RFP, right? And so um, River City Bank did respond to all three. Bank of the West did not, which is why they were, uh, they were only bidding on the banking component, which is why they were non-responsive. <coughs> Salinas Valley did respond only for the, uh, for the startup financing. But when comparing comparing the terms between the two, uh, River City Bank was um, superior. All right. Thank you very much. Peter had the role of uh, the hands-on work with the RFP. My role was more just an evaluator. Any other questions? Well, uh, yes. Uh, who's the bank that moderates the that Santa Cruz County uses? Bank of the West. Bank and I believe that they um, that could be why they chose to respond. But we were sure to reach out to every, I believe we were sure to reach out to every <coughs> bank that every one of you works with because we wanted to make sure that we covered um, everyone's banks that they have a, an array relationship with. Yes, Trina? Uh, did we at all ask other CCAs? I, I think River City or the River Bank is one that's common with the other CCAs for financing. Have we reached out to the other CCAs to find out other banking services or businesses <coughs> to finance these? So I can answer that a little bit. We uh, looked to their RFPs as we were creating our RFP. And again, River City Bank um, is the bank uh, for... Corinth County yes. and Silicon Valley use River City. My understanding is that Sonoma is moving forward with 
uh, from their from River City's response to some of us moving forward with a banking relationship with them. The thing is, is that CCAs are kind of a new credit. It's, it's a new type of agency, and most banks aren't <coughs> familiar and comfortable with it yet because there's not a lot of history. Right? Where River City is is now comfortable because they're working with several agencies. They're, they're building their portfolio in this area. Bank of the West did not respond on the on the line of credit because they were just uncomfortable with the credit and not understanding how the finance right. Thank you. I just want to wrap up with yes. a couple things, um, just in terms of process, again, given, given what we're trying to achieve here to move things along. There's two layers to uh, there is a recommendation to move ahead, but what will happen is, if approved, um, there will be a, a core staff team that works with the bank on negotiating terms and dealing with the, the primary credit guarantee arrangement, as has been discussed previously. At the same time, uh, we will be working to develop an interagency agreement that would be between the primary bank guarantors and the cities within each county so that hopefully that whole package comes back before uh, the operations board uh, for approval over the summer. So again, there's a few things that are gonna be happening in parallel here. Answer any questions about that. Sure. Sure. Yes. Just to get some clear clarity, because the credit guarantee will have budget implications for all the participating jurisdictions. So it would seem appropriate that, would, that before you begin negotiating, you get direction from the operations board to get some understanding on how the respective jurisdictions want to participate in the Rather than have it come back already negotiated and then uh, collectively we're obligated to go back to our boards and councils and say, Um, so one of the conversations Sean and I had was my peers, the auditor controller from Monterey, Mike Miller, as well as from San Benito, uh, uh, Joe Paul Gonzalez, might all want to weigh in on this process and join the process uh, of gathering these documents with her. That's a good idea, but again, I, I would suggest and I would look to my peer city managers, do you want to participate or give some direction with respect to the credit card? I think this is a point of contention that we had in our just, No, that's okay. The credit guarantee was negotiated mm -hmm. in the lead up to the JPA agreement, which you have all approved, and it's in Article 5 of the JPA agreement. As a pro rata share. As a pro rata so, so it will be, then the no. credit arrangement will be a pro rata share. No, you have to read 5.3.4. It was. It was the subject of hours and hours of negotiation, and it's more complicated than that. But it's a per seat basis, not a per capita basis. No, we, we left it open. So if you look at 5.3.4, you'll see that about midway in that paragraph, the credit guarantee will be distributed on a per seat basis. Shared seat members will divide the credit among the cities sharing those seats. We're not telling you how to do that. That was left open so that you can negotiate amongst yourselves. I, if I might help, sure. I think the way it works is those that have permanent seats, that you get all the seats, you split it up, those that have permanent seats, that's your portion. The shared city seats, those agencies where it's three or four, have to get together and figure out how to split that share and provide a share. I believe that's what we'll finally discuss. That, that's correct. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yes, correct. However, the mechanics of this are proposed as proposed that the three cities, the, sorry, the three counties, would be the primary guarantors with the bank because the bank doesn't want to have 19 correct. guarantees. So there's it's a two-tiered structure where the, it's proposed that the the counties will step up on behalf of their member cities to be the primary guarantor. At the same time, there will be an interagency agreement or MOU developed that would be in place between the cities and the, the shared seat and the county on behalf of their cities so that the bank is dealing with three and then those three are going back out to their member agencies with an MOU that protects them. So there's two things at play here. 
That's the structural. But that's not approach. in the JPA. That's staff proposal. Well, that if, um, the part about the the credit guarantee being distributed on a per seat basis. That is that part is in the JPA. The mechanics of how that is done was decided in during the negotiations by the uh, governance group committee. Now that was the recommendation, and was the idea that each county would take the credit guarantee for their cities. And the reason for that was because you are able to, you had your staff had a, had an agreement and a model agreement with your your cities about uh, how you've done that before. And so we agreed with that. We thought it was a great idea. But that actual mechanics hasn't been approved yet. Mm -hmm. That part is still it was in dis that part was in concept and was still to be developed. But the concept was that the three counties take the credit guarantee, work out an, an agreement with your cities for that interagency uh, per seat line of credit agreement. So that part we could meet in the operations board if you'd like to work out that piece of it. Exactly. And that's what I'm suggesting because that's a decision that, that we would have to bring back to the board of supervisors. Oh, yeah. It has budget implications and then we would need to um, get an appropriate form of Yes, the, the idea was that that agreement would always go back to your respective board because they're going to have to approve that actual um, credit guarantee agreement. So we have like to respect their discretion for the agreement. And if we can, we'll develop a standard uh, MOU interagency agreement, but if that's not possible, then we will throw it. Just a question about that, Ben. Are we still on the like August timeline to get everything wrapped up. I, my concern is, I mean, we need this money to pay our our CAO, CEO who we hope to have on board by then. Let's pass the recommendations. All right, we'll start taking from today. there. Okay. <laughs> so I move that we approve the three recommendations with their relevance passed, included in our staff report. I'll second the motion. Okay, second by uh, Thompson. Good. Question here. An yeah. additional question. I don't really call for public comment. Um, are, are you also saying that in the end it would just be an operations board decision? Because this seems like a major financing decision ultimately that was then need to go to the policy board under um, you know, under the joint powers agreement, the issuance of bonds, major capital expenditures, or any other financing. I, I would think that after the operations board would be making a recommendation to the policy board ultimately mm -hmm. to you know, ultimately approve all these arrangements. Yep. If, if I may, um, I think the intent of the 5.3.4 was that every seat takes its pro rata share if it's a full seat or if it's a partial seat. And if each county wants to then negotiate that differently with their cities on how they want to take their credit guarantee, that's up to you all. Um, if, if the CAO for Santa Cruz County and the cities want to gather and discuss that, I, you know, we can do that. But it's clearly in here that we would take one pro rata share of lots of milk because we have one seat. So <coughs> I'm also concerned about moving forward expeditiously. So I think that <coughs> by fee, I said the fact of the matter is is that these agreements among you know the county of Santa Cruz and the city of Capitol, yeah. and lots of those cities, they're gonna have to go to our legislative bodies or city councils anyway. So saying those are operations board and policy board and then to all the jurisdictions, it makes me concerned about the line of credit and actually being able to meet the timelines. So I guess the one stop we could take out there would be the policy board. If we know it's going to go to every elected in the region anyway. Sean, is that that's I don't I don't want to arm you. Go ahead. Yeah. The, this uh, credit guarantee agreement will also include uh, hopefully the long term financing or arrangement as well. Uh, it would be the startup credit relationship, banking relationship, as well as the, the <coughs> idea that we're going to go with them for the long term. So I think it has to go back to the policy board ultimately. So I think it'll be operations board forming an agreement. It, each jurisdiction will have to approve it uh, ultimately, and then the policy board will have to approve it. Now the timing of how that works, I'm not sure, <coughs> but I think the policy board for sure will have to approve it because of the it's a major financing decision. I thought when every entity signed on to the JPA, they knew what the dollar would be. I thought it was a reasonable assumption. You approved the JPA. 
why are we going back to them now and tell well, them we're, something different? Yeah, we're, we've, uh, the JPA does uh, re include the, ter the general terms, but this is the specific agreement with the specific dollar amounts, which are not in the JPA. So this will be the actual specific dollar amount, specific agreement with each county and with the banking institution. Uh, with each city, so those specific agreements have to come back to each governing board. So we're just the process. So, any other questions from the board? There are public. Um, any other questions from the public? I'm Bruce Kuchich. I'm actually the uh, relationship manager for River City Bank. Um, and so, uh, Those are I, likely. yeah, I just want I'm the relationship manager at River City Bank uh, together with the proposal. And uh, thank you guys for uh, evaluating it. And uh, it's really exciting to be here today. Um, I want to um, kind of go back on Sean. You, you kind of hit um, uh, a good point where the timing, um, my experience with working with Silicon Valley Clean Energy, the thing that held up um, the credit. Um, Availability was all of the back and forth between the various um, uh, JPA members on the guarantees, um, and so I, I I like the approach that you've uh, recommended with the just the, the three counties being included, uh, and then having the MOU kind of as an ancillary agreement uh, to that, um, and uh, happy to provide you with uh, kind of a, a a draft guarantee agreement that we've used uh, prior. Um, any other comments from the public? Yes. I just want to echo what it's Bray said. When this came, to, I'm the alternate for the City of Marina. When it came to the City of Marina, the representation was we get one fourth vote, one eleventh of the board. Our share is one fourth of one eleventh, and our responsibility financially was to guarantee one fourth of one eleventh of the obligation. So what I'm hearing now is that they want us to go negotiate with the other three representatives that share this chair. That is very different than what the council accepted and voted and agreed to in accepting the JPA as written and as proposed to us, Gina was our presenter, Jenny, excuse me, was the presenter. And that's what we understood and voted on. So I want to echo that. And just a short caveat, there was a $70,000 figure that was the best estimate at the time. So that gave each jurisdiction, whatever their ballpark number was, a real good feel for the ballpark that they were approving at the time. Yeah. The amount that you were talking about is uh, is laid out in the JPA. That is not changing. That's in the Joint Powers Authority. It's, it's, as it was presented to you, it's by seat. And then this, and so every seat gets one eleventh in effect of the credit guarantee. And then within that seat, they divide it uh, equally, right? So that amount is total. We're talking about just the uh, mechanics of doing the agreements between the cities and the county, and the counties and the the uh, bank. So the amounts and the the general structure is laid out in the JPA. It's very clear how that amount of money will be distributed. It's just we're talking about the mechanics of how we're going to do the actual credit guarantee. So the word negotiation, I think, misled me okay. to think that it wasn't clear. Okay. So is there anything to negotiate, or is it already clear? Well, the part to negotiate is the actual credit guarantee between the counties and the cities, and whether the counties are going to be willing, how that side guarantee is going to be between each county and each city, what that agreement looks like, and whether each county is willing we had committed earlier, now we're assuming everybody, every county is still willing to take the credit guarantee for their cities with the bank. So it'll be the bank to each of the three counties. That'll be the primary credit guarantee. And then each county will have a side agreement with its cities, the cities in its county. That's the part we're talking about negotiating. Uh, thank you. I, I'm not sure Monterey County ever and negotiated that, uh, and and that now I hear there may be some problems between the cities how they're going to, uh, especially with Delray Oaks not coming in, and then we're still on the hook for the line of credit. So, Lou, and if I could, uh, Supervisor, you're absolutely correct. This issue was discussed, 
and it was discussed in context of the representative number of votes, that there would be a weighted <coughs> vote and so forth, but there was never a concrete agreement on how the credit risk would be shared. So the JPA is clear about the allocation of credit risk amongst all the members, and <coughs> I think what what is being said is that is not as changing. But Santa Cruz staff is now recommending, and the bank prefers not to deal with 11 different jurisdictions. They want to only deal with three jurisdictions. So in effect, what is being asked is, is each county is being asked to serve as the guarantor for the cities within its jurisdiction. The implication here, it, it's not a cash outlay but each jurisdiction must set aside and reserve those funds, and it has a budget impact. And so the concern for us this year is we have $55 million in storm damage, we have positions that are currently not funded, so this will be a current year budget impact for the county of Monterey. So we're not giving money away. So what is being asked for us is it's being asked that the counties, each of our counties, if you will, front the money for the cities for this purpose. Can I ask that question from the city perspective? Um, I'm not asking, we're not gonna, I'm not going to be recommending to my council, Monterey County, to front any money. I'm going to be recommending to my council for us to back the credit guarantee that Monterey okay. County will be providing. So we will, because we, when we agreed to weigh on this JP, and I think we've just discussed the semantics here, is we knew our fiscal obligation. We knew the fiscal backing that we were providing to. I don't think none of the cities are saying that joined up. They're saying, no, we're not going to back that. We know we have to back that. Now, the mechanics of that is we have to enter to the deal with Monterey County to give Monterey County certainty that we've, we we either set it aside or whatever we're going to do, so Monterey County is protected so they're not left holding the bag on their share of $2.5 million for Monterey County. So I don't think none of the people are speaking for South or Salinas down <coughs> South. We're, we know what we signed up to. Yeah. We're not going to. We're not saying we're not going to do that. We just got to work out the mechanics. And, and it's the same here. So, so I'm not. I'm not going to ask the county to carry our burden on the 55 million dollars that you guys already have prepared. In, in, in Renee, if I just in not to drag this on too long, but just to clarify, we fully intend that you would um, uh, hold firm on your commitment. But from a budgetary standpoint, my point is that if the county needs to serve as the guarantor, we have to put those funds in a dedicated account. Okay. Uh, I disagree with you. If I, I, I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's no uh, requirement to, have a, to actually have a cash set aside. Uh, it's a contingent liability. And so the way that it's worked with other uh, CCEs and River Bank, uh, there's been no requirement that we actually put a, a set up cash and, and set it in a, a separate account or anything. It's a general contingent liability, no cash set aside required. But it's, it, we still have to report that on cash as a debt and obligations. It's a contingent, that's part of the discussion, it's contingent liability. So it's not a it's not a true reportable debt. Okay. So those are the kinds of things that, that I would suggest that we discuss with the office. And this has been well, well uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy has gone through this very detailed, and so we looked at it, and so we know it's not, it's not a, it's not a, it's a contingent liability. It doesn't go on your cap or doesn't require cash set aside. And there's a, there's a model we can follow. And Santa Cruz also believes it does not require that it needs to go through these new county debt policy committees that we recently have. So those are the kinds of things that we'd like to confirm with our auditor's office. So, okay. Mr. Chair, it's irrelevant to what relationship a county has with all its local jurisdictions because. Bank all cares is the relationship of those three counties, correct? correct. So if there's an infighting per se, <laughs> hardware, software, if there's something going on between the county and all the cities down there, the bank doesn't care because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's going to be San Benito, Monterey, and Santa Cruz that is going to be ultimately responsible to that bank. Is that correct? That, that is correct. So in regardless if we decide to make a, a vote today or not, and it doesn't include the relationship we're going to have with the local small cities and counties, the bank doesn't care as long as there's a resolution and a vote that the three counties will be ultimately responsible at the end of the day. So my motion stands, but if there's any suggested amendments that cover the policy board role or to cover the county to jurisdiction process, 
we can make those amendments to the motion. And if I may, through the chair, it's simply that the policy board is engaged um, and, and participates in a meaningful way in the negotiation. Yeah. Okay. So I'll amend my motion to add that uh, we approve the policy board's engagement in a relevant way. Second the motion for discussion. Okay, so there was a, another second. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I second. Yeah. Yeah. I think all of that is spelled out of the I, I, I do too. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that it's necessary, but uh, do, do we, so we have a, but we do have a motion and a second to that. I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure it's necessary. So I, I, so I just want to pass the motion or is that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just because I don't think it's necessary, I, I probably wouldn't be supporting it. I concur that it's redundant because the JP does spell that out. So do you have to, yeah, I guess I just want to make sure we're not stepping on our own feet. I, I, I do too. I think. Tight, and I just keep looking over at staff and seeing where it looks. So. <laughs> so <laughs> think it looks. No worries. No worries? <laughs> what a small. I heard that it was coming to the policy board anyway, so yeah. that this is redundant. So I don't see how this hurts. Okay. I'm going to leave it in there or take it out. I just want to move on. So what, you want to stick with the motion of the second. Um, He's lobbying for this guy. <laughs> I don't know if we have a second at this time with that amendment. Well, yeah, the amendment, amendment is redundant. Um, I, I think we are making sure that everything does get spelled out. And I know that this has been hashed out in other agencies pretty fluently. And I'm, I'm fine with the motion to bring in this item um, number 11 on here. Okay, so we do have a motion in a second. Okay. Um, okay. Did you have one more comment? Uh, I, I, I have some questions. I just don't know that it's necessary. But um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Better take a look at uh, how we're going to do this. Thing. Hmm? You better have a hand count or, well, yeah, let's speak there. Okay, all those ayes, raise your hand. Favor the motion. Okay, passes. 13 votes. Okay. Go on to the the next item. Uh, sorry. Go oh, cool. ahead. Sorry, just one thing. Just like we had the just a minute ago, we had some volunteers for the uh, ad hoc operations subcommittee. We do need some additional support for these discussions around negotiating with the bank and then the interagency agreements. It was suggested that the auditor controller of each county would want to be involved. That's a suggestion, not necessarily set in stone, but it'd be good to know that so we can get moving on this. Um, do you guys have to go back to your auditor controllers? Or is there like an officer? They're independently elected, that's right. <laughs> Unless, you them them an Unless there's finance, other finance directors, we just need to uh, create a small group that's going to help us push this ball forward with the banking and credit. I think so. You're just asking for volunteers to do that. Unless you guys prefer us to follow up and recall you and recruit you. <laughs> okay, was there anybody? Yeah, volunteer. You have volunteer. And I'll volunteer to ask for other controllers. Okay, yay. Okay. Got a volunteer? Others? I'll volunteer. Carlos? Carlos? Sure. I'll ask my auditor controller too. <laughs> <laughs> we have anyone from San Benito? Yeah, we, we'll get, we'll get your call. Ray and I, we can. We'll take them out to cheap lunch and we'll okay. get some. Cheap lunch. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs> that would be number six. <laughs> Daddy City Diet Rally. <laughs> That's okay. hilarious. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we're losing now. We're almost there. Uh, we have a uh, discussion of officers for poly policy and operations boards. Uh, Carol? All right. So this discussion item on the agenda is a report outlining the election process for both the policy and operations board chair and vice chair, as well as the secretary and auditor controller. 
um, you would want to refer to sections 3.9.1 through 3.9.4 of the JPA uh, if you have any questions. But it states that the policy of board shall elect a chair and a vice chair from the county themselves who, who will preside over the policy board meetings. The vice chair will serve in his absence. The term will be for one year with no limit on the number of terms to be held by either. Similarly, for the operations board, shall select a chair and a vice chair from the, among themselves who will preside over the operations board meetings, and the vice chair again will serve in the absence of the chair. The term again will be for one year with no limits. The term will be for one year with no limit on the number of terms. Each board shall appoint a secretary who will take the meeting minutes, and each board shall maintain uh, all official records for the authority. And the, lastly, the policy board shall appoint the treasurer and the auditor. So staff is, uh, staff is proposing that the election of the chair and vice chair positions for both the policy and operations board be brought to the next meetings in June or July. In the interim, interested members of the board are asked to self-nominate by submitting a letter of intent with background information to me and my email address is included in the agenda item by no later than close of business on May 17th of this year. Submitted nominations will be distributed to the respective board for consideration prior to the next meeting. Elections for the secretary and treasurer positions are also planned for that meeting and interested candidates again may self-nominate by submitting a letter of intent and background information again to me by May 17th close of business. Okay. Yes, Carlos? We, uh, we were hoping that one of the uh, jurisdiction's uh, finance directors would be uh, volunteer to serve as the interim uh, or the uh, treasurer uh, slash auditor of the organization. Uh, so if any, so that, I'm just throwing it out there for all of you to nominate, think about nominating your finance director or administrative services director. Uh, we, we're gonna need some support uh, at a fairly high level uh, for at least this interim period until uh, the in interim CEO comes on and then hires their own uh, finance director and so forth. So it's just a, you know, we're talking a few months period, but it, during this credit guarantee period, it'll be important. Thank you. Did you want to add? No, I'm, we're, just we're gonna, next month. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna bring that back. Yes. So I just wanted people to think about it and we'll, and. Okay, so we will. Anybody who would, yes, uh, so you should be for approval of the process? Yeah. Yes. Good. It's just a report that we have, um, and um, to people submit their names if they would like to be at either of these offices or either of those boards. Just a comment. One comment. Yeah, so I, I think the process is, uh, is good. I hope that when we're looking at who we're going to actually approve as chair and vice chair, um, that we look at uh, possibly, I mean, there may be other models, but I was thinking if, if a city rep, for instance, is the chair, that there be a county rep that is the vice chair from a different county. You know, we mix it up a little bit, um, and although there are no term limits, I just think it would be nice if we were committed to sharing the leadership around whatever that might mean, because um, there, are, you know, there, there are no. There's no, there are no rules of the road spelled out, so we'll just kind of take it as we go. But I just wanted to put that out there as uh, something to consider as we think about who we who we select and how. We and I, I think if I could, and, uh, I think that it would be good if we had a rotation uh, among the counties. It could be a city mm -hmm. or, or a county representation, but not have one county there for five years. We're going to do this every year or every two years, or whatever the case may be. That it be one county this time and then a representative from that county or a city in that county of a different county. Mm -hmm. So we, we have different representation sharing this. Yes. Yeah, I would echo that. Um, Bruce, I think that that's how AMBAG and the Air District has functioned. And we have some real good examples there. Um, that diversity really is a good practice. So I don't know if we need to write that in or if it's a cultural kind of accepted <coughs> practice. But I think that will be the process of yeah. the report that comes back next month. That's good. Well, Mr. Chair, I think, um, I think we should establish it today because whoever wants to run for chair. You know, we can't do it because it's not on the agenda. Got it. Mm -hmm. Specifically. Let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Are, what is, I know we're getting in, the, in, the, in here in the schedule, but 
is the policy is the uh, operations board going to meet before the policy board, or are we going to do this again at the same time in a month or two? That's item number fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's why I know it's on the agenda. But I'm just wondering if the the, the operations board is going to meet before we Probably. get back together again. Then I think the operations board needs to have an interim chair right now as well. Otherwise, well, I don't think we can do it because it's not on the agenda. But you, you can. Um, the idea was to have the election of officers for the operations board in June, which is right now what we're targeting for your next meeting, and then policy board would be in July, either at its own meeting or as a joint meeting. That's that's what the current meeting is. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Chair, just to clarify, was there an intent to adopt bylaws? So wouldn't that all be incorporated in the bylaw document? The order of, of the chair, of executive committees, and all the infrastructure you need? I think that's the yeah. Yes, that'd be the way to wrap the whole thing up. Eventually, so some CCAs have bylaws, some don't. It will be up to you know your board to decide, and maybe this can be a matter for the operations board to decide whether or not you want to do that, or if the JPA agreement is adequate as your constitution, supported by board policy. So that's not a decision that we've made yet, but we can add it to the agenda. Any other questions? We could. Um, I think we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to uh, 15, but I think we'll probably put it on the future agenda as soon as possible. Uh, any other comments from the public? On this? Uh, any more comments from the board? Okay. We'll, uh, move on to item number 13, a report to provide the direction regarding the contractor support. Um, excuse me, Carol. <laughs> yeah, I see that. So thank you. So this this, this discussion item um, is about early operations contract support, and leading up to launch, it's been necessary for Monterey Bay Community Power to utilize local staff from member agencies as well as consultants from um, that have worked, excuse me, as well as outside consultant expertise. So what we are contemplating is that vendor selections will include, and some of these items have been touched on already, technical and energy services that would include analyzing load data, submitting the implementation plan to the CPUC. The next, I, the next uh, item of support would be for community outreach and marketing efforts uh, to continue to provide ratepayers with information that will enable them to make an informed decision. Um, implementation and operation support will be required by existing interim staff and the future CEO in the areas of governance and administration, as well as data management and call center services, which will include managing customer account data, switching, billing and payment settlements, reporting to customers, and processing opt-outs. So the County of Santa Cruz has already engaged vendors in the first three sets of these services. Uh, we've engaged Pacific Energy Advisors for the Technical Energy Services, um, Miller Maxfield for Community Outreach, and Lean Energy US for Implementation and Operation Support. Um, we are presenting two options uh, here before you today for your consideration. Option A is to update the scope of work, amend and transfer existing contracts to PEA, Miller Maxfield, and Lean from the County of Santa Cruz to Monterey Bay Community Power. And because we don't have an existing uh, contract, issue a new RFP for data management and call center services. Option B is to issue new RFPs and negotiate new contracts for uh, some or all of the service categories. Uh, our staff is recommending option A. Um, we've been pleased with the experience we've had with these vendors with their technical advisory um, implementation plan that was drafted um, and with the other vendors as well and by doing this we would decrease time in going out to an RFP as well as the um, administrative 
burden and continue the momentum that we already have going. Option B would require an RFP process and contract negotiations that would take um, additional time. Okay. Um, I just speak. I, I think that uh, the way we've been uh, proceeding up to now, and, and this is a different type of agency from any other that's ever been formed. So I, I, I think that the uh, personnel, the, the companies that we have now, have done a great job, and uh, I think it just keeps the momentum going too. Unless there's a good reason to change, I, I think we ought to just stick with with, with option. A. Yes, sir. I just think. That Option B should be the first agenda item for the new interim CEO if we're going to have one. That, that I, I agree things have been done very well with the existing people, but I don't think we'll be proven if we have an RFP to get that done on a permanent basis. I think we could do that. Would be the best bang for the dollar. Um, so I, I think it should be, I don't know how to put the motion here, but agree to well, do it like we're doing it. Allow to agree to do continue on the way we are, but very soon, probably right after we pick our chief operating officer, the RFP should go out for contracting this, this workout so that we're sure that we're getting the best bang for the world. Okay. I agree with everything Ray said, and I have a question. How much would the option be delayed be? Would it be two months? Would it be five months? I would probably say between three and four. I mean, especially if we're talking about issuing all of these RFPs at the same time, you know, the staff time to develop them, review them, come back to the board. And the staff that would do that work, uh, is that the same staff that would be doing other implementation project work? <coughs> Are you asking if the staff who would be reviewing the RFPs would be? Yeah, does this stress the bandwidth of the staff yeah. who are doing other work? Yes. Am I looking at the staff? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've had plenty of support, but yeah. Yeah, sure. Councilman. Um, just a comment and uh, question. So I am, or actually two comments. I apologize that I keep closing my eyes and pushing on my face because I'm getting <laughs> we can't get through this meeting. Um, but um, so, you know, my comment would just echo uh, what's been said about the need to really consider option B, and that's not to suggest that the current uh, list of potential contractors won't do a great job and could be selected, but I do think there are plenty of uh, contractors out in our region that may also be interested in working with us, and um, just echoing the principle of geographical and economic justice, I think it's in our interest to uh, not be closed off to option B. Uh, I understand the need for efficiency to get this up and running, um, so yeah, I, that, I just was yeah, wondering I, if you could tell us a little bit more about the uh, decision for these particular if I could just say something. I, I think that, uh, I, and I appreciate that. I think we should, yeah, get the best out there if there's something better. But I just, under the circumstances, I think a short-term extension of six months or something of that nature yeah. would probably be the proper thing to do. But, uh, <coughs> Councilman Smith? Yeah, I think you said that. I was going to uh, encourage some type of a motion that would also include a timeline of six months to bring it back and then go out to an RP to get other, uh, opportunities to uh, selection by that time we will have a CEO in place that could then steer that uh, and so this would not be a granting of a contract for a long term but actually it's for six months and that way then the CEO steps in and takes it over and then go out to option B. Is that a formal motion? I will, I will put that in the motion. I'll second that motion. <laughs> We've got a motion in three, six seconds. <laughs> 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 change. Every bone in my body needs me to think we need to get this out and open and transparent as quickly as possible. Um, so I appreciate that. And I think that's a good compromise. Any comments from the public? Okay. Uh, Come 
don't you come on up too? Uh, line up, line, line up. Hello everyone, Brennan Jensen with uh, Climate Action Compact. Um, so I appreciate the discussion that's being had and the urgency for getting uh, contracts in place. We all know that things need to move forward and that staffing, that continuity is tremendously important to be able uh, to keep making progress. So um, I do support that. Um, however, I do also um, want to give a little bit of voice to the option B precisely from that perspective of being able to provide opportunity for local uh, local businesses and services who may, may be interested in providing these services to be able to inform the process. Um, and also just a reminder that there's going to be really key decisions obviously that are happening here in the, in the next six to twelve months. So whoever is kind of at that table is really setting the stage for the, uh, the future of the agency. So I do want folks to just kind of keep that in mind. And then I thought I would just ask a question to Sean. Maybe you could give a little bit of voice to some of the, the key uh, documents that are going to be created um, over this next year, and in particular, kind of the implementation plan and the concept around the uh, integrated resource plan. I know that there's a lot of discussion about that during the negotiations. I think that's particularly at issue for some of the stakeholders in the community. Thanks. Hi, good afternoon, I guess now. Um, my name is Andy Hartman. I'm with the International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, Local Union 234. I'm also with the Building and Construction Trades Council. First off, I just want to say congratulations on getting to this point. Uh, quite impressive. Um, my, um, I, I, I would advocate for option B. Um, I don't think that the RFPs that were released, um, I think of those three vendors, I think um, Miller Maxwell was actually the only one that responded to an RFP. Um, the other two entities, um, one, well, PEA responded to an initial RFP for the feasibility study. So they actually haven't even responded to an RFP for, um, what is it, for the technical and energy services, and nor has Lean responded to an RFP for the implementation operation support. So um, just based on that alone, I, I think it would be more, um, more transparent, more public. Um, we don't know if we're getting the best price uh, for what the services they're offering. Um, so just in the, in the sake of uh, competition, I would uh, advocate for option B. Thanks. Anyone else from the public would like to address this? Any more comments from the board? Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to know um, how were the current um, resources put in place and what was the process so that we could get a better understanding of that? So um, the County of Santa Cruz issued an RFP for uh, technical services in order to do the technical study. Um, I think that was done back in 2015. Uh, RFPs were received and reviewed, and uh, Pacific Energy Advisors was selected as the vendor to do the, uh, to do the technical study. An RFP was also issued for uh, marketing and outreach. And uh, again, RFPs were issued, they were brought in-house, reviewed, and Miller Maxfield was selected. Um, the only item that wasn't, uh, didn't go through an RFP process for those services for the Energy USA. And if I could make one additional comment, there are existing agreements for those three services, but we don't have anything yet for call center and data management services. So an RFP <coughs> um, issued sooner than later um, for that, as opposed to waiting, you know, because we don't have anything currently in place for that. Um, I'm interested in the compromise agreement. I'd like to speak to the idea of continuity of this company. So I'm in support of the uh, compromise agreement. What is the compromise agreement? I think it's the, the six month extension. Yes. Yes. I have a couple of tiny yes. questions. Right. Uh, yeah, they were. Uh, is there a contract with Lean Energy that could easily be turned into an RFP as far as scope of work? I, I would say no, because the services that they've been providing so far are going to be different than what will be needed over the next 12 months. So, okay. And then is Lean local? I, have, I don't know Lean. No. Mill Valley. Mill Valley? Miller Maxfield is local. Okay. 
and uh, to do the implementation operation support, such as Lean, the Energy is doing. Uh, are you aware of local firms that could perform that? I am not. No, I don't know if any other county staff is aware. Okay. Well, I am concerned that uh, at least Lean Local didn't go through an RFP. So uh, my compromise would be that there be an RFP for that entity that has not competed and is not local. And if we just go with option A, Lean Energy will be more competitive for the long-term project, which is less likely then that a local firm would be engaged in the further impl future implementation and operation support. So I would like to make a substitute motion similar to the first motion with the only change being that uh, the, the implementation and operation support would go out to an RFP. Okay. Yes. So speak up, please. So so wait, 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 wait. Do we have a second for the substitute motion? Second. Uh, under the question, Feldman to a procedure question, Mr. Chair. How can how can someone uh, remove a motion on the table with another motion? Didn't remove it. It's still on the table. So so the, so when we're doing this, we're going to we're going to discuss and, and vote on motion number two first, right? Correct. Thank right. you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right. So I still have Yes. Go ahead. Speak up. So my question is in regards to the procurement process that was used to uh, retain the vendors in option A. RFPs were issued from the County of Santa Cruz and followed our purchasing guidelines. But as a recommendation of the JPA, we don't have Right. Yes. Okay. So a couple points I want to make really quickly. I think everyone needs to be conscious of the fact that if we don't move forward in a timely fashion on this stuff, this is we're not going to make our our April rollout. So Everybody, I mean, I, I understand the desire to issue RFPs. Believe me, I'm a city manager. I think we can issue RFPs to get the most competitive rate we possibly can. I think everyone needs to be cognizant of if we don't keep our team in place and keep moving forward hard, we're going to miss our deadlines. So everyone needs to understand the priorities that are in place here. In addition, these things are pretty new, and there aren't very many firms that have had experience helping local jurisdictions establish three county, multiple county, multiple agency, JPAs to purchase power and do this together. Lean is one of the only, I don't know if there's more in Southern California, but we're the very, very, very few firms that does this. So I think everyone needs to be really aware that if we jump ships now, we're probably not going to make that April deadline. And if we can move forward for six months, issue RFPs, look and see are there ways to do things better, faster, cheaper, great. But if we we cut ties, I think we're really putting in jeopardy our ability to roll out on this time. Yes. Um, I just want to say that when I saw this, I was worried because I saw no contracts, no scope of work. I was sort of thinking, uh-oh, we're being asked to approve these uh, right away. The thing that really interests me, I would much prefer to go out to RFP, but I think the time constraint is, um, is really of of concern, so my interest is going to be to look at the scope of work um, because I I want to make sure that um, we're getting, you know, the very um, particular and unique services that we need, and that and I don't know if it's possible when this comes back, but I I don't understand exactly how these uh, contractors what they're going to be doing, because I haven't seen the scope of work, and how that relates to what the County of Santa Cruz staff are going to be doing in support of this, so that we're, you probably know that the lines will be clear, but I don't, and I just want to make sure that people aren't going to be stumbling over each other, um, and that there's the appropriate um, division of labor. Um, I also, from the perspective of Monterey County, um, some of my colleagues had concerns that the outreach uh, was not 
uh, as robust and um, uh, responsive to Monterey County as we might have liked. So when the scope of work comes, I want to be sure that there is that um, possibility that uh, Monterey County gets served very well uh, by the, you know, I know these folks have the ability, so I just need to make sure that, you know, we're getting, our, our residents are getting what they need in terms of outreach. So, uh, Councilman uh, McShane. You know, I would echo Jane's remarks that I think all of us embrace what we were sharing. Uh, you know, we're all very sensitive to local procurement and the benefit of the local model we're really dealing with. Uh, to, to Councilmember Ed's uh, point, we find ourselves a little bit of time six months, and though this team is extremely uh, capable, uh, it, this will just add more excitement to the, to the moving animal that we're riding here. Um, so I, I think the original motion covers that, and I think as a board, we will embrace that. And Mr. Chair, if I could, yeah. I just think um, this is the interim let's get up and get started. When we get the CEO, you know, we're going to be looking at what we want our staffing pattern to be for the JPA going forward. Uh, we're going to be able to have a lot more to say about it. But right now, we just need to get ourselves in position to be able to offer uh, energy to our, for our residents. So what's on, what's on, the, what's on the table, Mr. Chair? Well, we have a substitute motion to um, continue uh, with who we have, except for lean and go out to an, an RFP, is that correct? Yes, and in 10 seconds, I just want to say that being this our first meeting, uh, we are setting the stage today on how we vote for sticking to some principles that I think we all believe in. Okay. I, I will support uh, uh, Mr. Smith's position as given a six months concept, uh, which basically was no <laughs> Yeah, okay, yes. Um, again, I, I, I think that we're hearing a, a strong momentum about the, the scope of work for transparency purposes. We should have this available for the community to see what that scope of work is, um, website or otherwise, maybe even part of what comes again for our next meeting is what really is the outline for each of these agencies that are doing the service for us that we're paying money for that the community needs to be aware of. And then when it goes out, they'll have a clear message about what the RFP process is going to include. And um, probably what, what we're hiring the specialties uh, firms to do that we don't know what we don't know what they're doing for us. So I think it's imperative important for the transparency. So very, very quickly, too, is, is I agree with what you're saying. And there are groups out there that now that we have established this GPA for three counties involved in all residents involved, that are going to be gearing up to do this work very quickly. Uh, energy was, was picked because in Mill Valley, that's the first one that started. So they had the experience at the time. What we're looking at now is that there's people in this room right now that are writing things down that are, they're going to be, when we establish the RFP, they're going to be in there. It's not going to be the only, they're not going to be the only player. So I think if you give them six months to come up with that stuff, Yes. Yeah, I'd like to concur with uh, Jim Parker's uh, earlier comments. And you know, I'm very sensitive to the issues that you're talking about. And I think that's very important. And so, to some extent, we've been on a rush. But that's very important for what we're trying to do. And I think your comments are very, very important also because there's going to be a lot of localities who are going to want to jump in. I'm very happy uh, she's not here right now with what her group has done. I've seen the preparation, I've seen all the documentations. I think the excellent job has been done and the choice that uh, came to that, the choice basically. Okay. So I'm very happy about that. So um, I'd like to call a question, I think. Okay, we'll, we'll have to call for the substitute motion first. Yes, exactly. And uh, it, but I think we've gone to the public. Um, yes. Everybody else is okay. Uh, okay. So without what we're doing, uh, what the motion is, is in essence option A, but to go uh, go out for an RFF to extend for the two Miller Maxfield and um, Pacific Energy Advisors uh, to co continue that for six months, but to go out for an RFP for uh, the implementation and operations support, the lean company, and data management. So that that's the motion from uh, 
uh, member Bill Gatto. Everybody understand that all right? We're, so we're, have, we're continuing the, the, uh, the offices of uh, PEA at Miller Maxfield for, uh, but we're going to go out for an RFP. We would go out for an RFP with Lean. Everybody okay with that? All in favor? I think we better have a hand motion on that. All in favor? All, all, uh, all opposed? Okay, that motion fails. We'll go to the original motion, and that is option A for the uh, RFPs, or to continue the uh, work with the, the the companies that we have uh, contracted with. Yes. Wasn't that with option A plus six months? Correct. Six months, six yeah, six months. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Option, option A was. Oh, and plus for the all, uh, for an yeah. RFP for the call center. Right. That's that's. Right. Data management. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So Correct. I mean that's part of A. So option A plus putting the timeline. Six months. Going out to an RFP. Is within six months uh, to establish the uh, the vendors that the agency will need. Right. Everybody clear. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So ordered. I think unanimously. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Delgado against that. Okay. Okay. I'll even more, a little bit more pricey or less. Well. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to go to um, discussion of the regular meeting location. We do want to meet again, don't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is so much fun. Yeah. This is so much fun. This is so much fun. Got, really, we've gotten through this pretty darn well. I'm really pleased. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we're going to have, I guess. Um, to get, get an idea, to, to winnow it down, there's been suggested uh, July 5th, and I'm not sure that's the right one. Uh, that's for the joint boards. Probably the 28th and 9th was pretty tight, I think somebody, I think uh, Sean said, uh, for our next meeting. But let me, I, I think uh, th this first, uh, let me start with location. I think this location is central. Uh, it does. Um, I maybe just have some logistics concerns, possibly, but I think this is as close as we're going to get to the middle of uh, getting people here. Um, uh, and I haven't talked to the Marino Library specifically about this because they don't know when we might be meeting again. But just anybody's I idea. Uh, I, I think it's best that we have it centralized and not move it around because if we go south, north, or what, east, or whatever, uh, it's going to be a longer drive for uh, two thirds of us, probably. What what's the suggestion? Um, I second that motion. Yeah, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Yeah. Thank you, Chair's prerogative. Yeah. I could, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. You can make. I won't make the motion. You can. What that we meet in here? Meet in Marina. Okay. Well, I think sounds like Marina might be a good location. I'm going to try to suggest a regular day and time. I mean, I think it was suggested in the board report first Wednesday. Um, now July is going to be an issue and we, we're going to probably find another time for that. But in general, does the first Wednesday in the morning seem to work or can we make it work? Madam Vice okay. Chair, maybe I can grab somebody from the library to confirm that, that oh. if we agree on a day we can get the word. <laughs> Yeah. Before we do that, right. except one point related to that is, is I know that when we schedule meetings and we want to televise them, uh, it's relatively expensive when you use a facility like this versus one of our board chambers. So I don't know if Marina would be willing to host in your, in your board chambers. I, they're already wired and it's set up for easier. Yeah. So I, I, I just want yeah. to toss that out that everyone's cognizant of that. The sort of technical challenges of trying to do the meetings in a venue that isn't necessarily as hardwired for that sort of stuff as so, board hearing. That's a good point. Well, okay. So, so you're, you're, you're suggesting, I don't know. You're I suggesting maybe the Marina Council Chamber. I, I, I'm tossing it out there to Marina. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it could seat this many people. It may have made up if it's approximately the same size, but it has a dais. It takes up some of that room. Could you see 10 at the dais? Because I think each, each, each individual board has 10. 11. 11. Isn't the next one a joint as well? Okay. 
we're, we're anticipating a joint meeting sometime in July, but that the operations board itself would meet in June. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I would propose that we, we stay with this for a month or two. Uh, we then query what our needs are. Uh, there's a couple other options, but I agree that once you land on a place, it should be always in the same place. The only other room that I can think of that's large like this is the uh, Monterey uh, Air Quality uh, going along Highway 68. But, uh, but I think with time, we need to calendar it and we need to bring in the camera piece and the microphone piece uh, to do that. But I think this room is fine for the next you know, at least six meetings. Yeah. Now we have to just Councilman, uh, yeah, I'd echo that. I love Marina. Uh, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, we have a great host and lots of dining options. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, this, this, is, this is wonderful. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure we can work out the technology piece. Um, I, I'll leave it up to the chair if we need to vote on it. I, mean, I, um, I think what, what we'll do when we, uh, when we, before we adjourn, we'll set up a meeting, the date, and then the place as well. And it may well be here. This day and time is good. Yeah. Um, we're not going to need a motion for this, actually, but um, we'll keep that in mind. We'll, we'll just, I think the next few meetings, I think it's a good suggestion by uh, Councilman uh, Smith that we, we stick with Marina until we can be convinced that someplace else is better, it suits, uh, fits us, our needs better. Um, okay, now I guess... Um, we go to um, the operations board first um, to meet potentially for June 7th. The operations board. Mr. Bowman's not here too. He's trying to get the room. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if that, does that fit? Um, that's okay. Anybody? Well, let me put it this way: Is there anybody that that doesn't that doesn't work for? Doesn't work for. Yes. Let me see if uh, if we have an operations board meeting on June seventh, Wednesday, June seventh. Would that work for you, Mr. Bowen? It seems to work for everybody else. Operations. So this is going to be a regular day, or just a single day? Well, this is the problem for this meeting, then we'll, we'll figure out, your your operations group can figure out which, which is the best time and place to meet. Uh, but we've, we've said, Marina, how did, what did they say? Did they say anything to you? So, so Patty's here and she can schedule this room. Uh -huh. so, so if you pick your day, she'll go back and confirm and she can talk about those days. And that's be June 7th. <coughs> June, June 7th, and that's for the operations board. June 7th, operations board. At 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. at Marina. And July is TBD. We have to poll. I think July is TBD until we poll the policy board members to know whether July 5th is workable because of the 4th of July. It may not be. And we also may need a little more time to get through the whole CEO thing. So it might be later in July. The 4th of July is really not a problem because this year rally is the 29th and the 31st. So Monday, the 4th is a Tuesday. So we're looking at people coming back off that holiday to come here the next that, 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 that It's not a concern because of the rally, but it's a concern that people go on vacation. Vacation? That's the trick, is the summer vacation is upon us. So is late June too soon? Is that why we're into July? I, I, when you were going, I just said late June is pretty tight. Yeah, that's OK. Uh, you know, I, I think what we need to do is go back and digest some of the moving parts here. It would be awesome if we could get to late June. But I think when I think about the policy board reconvening and possibly in a joint meeting, um, the things that we have to approve would be this, the interim CEO and, and get through all that first and then also possibly next steps on the credit guarantee. So the question is, we could, we could have a meeting. It's a matter of can we get all those things done with all the various counterparties by the end of June. And I think that's largely sort of dependent on you guys in some ways. 
So is the second week of July postponing too much? I think that's workable. <coughs> we had talked about that. Twelfth. July twelfth. July twelfth. That we're talking about the joint boards. Then? Yes, potentially the joint. That's in this room. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I think what what when you were out, they were saying that stay you'd like room. to stay in this room for a little while so until you figure out other options. Yeah. So if you just keep having the date, she'll work. Let's look at. Um, let's see, it was um, July twelfth at 9 a.m. 9 to 1. Or, I think, we, I think they won't be that long. No, I, I hope they're not going to be that. I think it'd be uh, 9 to noon, let's say, though. You all make July 12th? And she, yep. she did confirm the date for the operations board, so that's all. Good. The operations board seems to be fine on uh, June 7th at 9 a.m. here. The policy board, we wouldn't, we're not going to set anything at this point. We're going to see how that, we're going to have another joint meeting, of course, on the 12th. So I think that's, um, and don't take that wrong when I say joint meeting, you know. So uh, yeah. this day and age, you never know what people are going to think. But, uh, <laughs> bringing samples. Creamy <laughs> Del <laughs> Okay, so we do have um, um, the um, got June seventh, nine a.m. here for the operations board. July twelfth at nine a.m. here for the joint board. And I would guess um, they're going to we'll put them down from nine to noon, but I'm not sure. Uh, do we have any public comments on that? Oh, on the yeah. 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 meeting dates. Oh, no, I'm meeting, meeting dates. <laughs> Anybody have any comments on the public meeting dates? Um, okay, then we'll just set those uh, as is. Um, okay. Then uh, we have board member and staff announcement uh, request for future agenda items. And we had a couple of those in the process and we said wait till item 15 and so here we go. I think uh, Councilman Smith, uh, yeah, very briefly, I, I try to keep track, but uh, <laughs> recruitment, I know that's going to go back to the policy board, but the recruitment of the C CEO, uh, the model, uh, bullet point two is the structure of the agency. I think we need to talk in terms of uh, what the vision of this is going to look like based on recommendations from the current advisors we have like to hear more about the structure moving forward. Uh, then the question of is it a uh, public agency involved in FERS or do we want to pursue uh, an agency that is not FERS um, but as as other uh, uh, and help me out, it's not the fine benefits, it's the other ones. Contribution. The fine contribution uh, agency for the employees. Uh, the other thing is, whoever's taking minutes to go back through, I know there were other board members that mentioned other things they'd like to do. Executive, 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 executive board. Thank you. The executive board uh, should be agendized. Executive uh, board to get policy agenda. Executive committee. Executive committee. And I had a couple of items. Okay. Uh, advisory board. One or more or zero. Uh, that point we talked about earlier, the long-term strategic goal of, I don't expect this to be next meeting, of course, but building out the local renewable generation projects and the prevailing wages, local workers, that whole issue that was in item eight. And then uh, bylaws, I'm not sure what we agree. So if there's anything to do with bylaws that we need to address, like whether we need them or have them, that was it. Next meeting. 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 Next mee
have yes. a question. Where do we leave the just the joint decision making about litigation? Are we going to discuss that further, or are we going to leave that alone? I just don't remember. It was so long yeah, ago. The, we, uh, <laughs> I think we can just table it. Yeah, so. Okay. Let's we'll see how it goes. Okay. Good. Well, Mr. Chair, just one point. You know, when I, um, when we talk about the advisory boards, when we come to the next meeting, it would be good to have some ideas of what you want, you know, to specify and why. If anybody wants to have those advisory boards, so we can Yes. So Jay, Jay made that comment and reminded us all I think we had a, a pretty strong dialogue about the litigation and the role of um, our uh, operations committee and versus the legal authority role of the policy board. So I think that should be agendized for clarification, whether we change it or not for the uh, JPA authorities, but I think it, it merits a deeper meaning and understanding and dialogue for all of us to go through that goals and responsibilities of both of those boards. Okay, we'll re that'll be agenda. So. And I do have a very tiny item that I think would be very brief for the next agenda, which would be just an update on the county city financial agreements, just so we're all on the same page that we're moving where we want to go. I have, a, um, you know, I, have, I have one more thing. Sure. Some of these oaths of office have been signed and some are not, they're not exactly correct. And we're going to, if you can sign them, if you haven't done so yet, um, or make sure that they're done properly, and I'll try to get them all in the back there as you're leaving. Uh, but if you, we don't get it done today, we'll mail them to you. What I was just going to ask is, is it possible, maybe it's already there, to get the roster on the website and the um, and then I don't know when the video can be uploaded, but it would be great to do that. Yeah. Maybe another point, um, since the roster yeah, needs to be updated, but it might be helpful to have if people are willing to like, better contact information. Uh, sure. I think the number, at least for the city of Saints, is like the main, you're getting like, like, voicemail, hell, you'll never catch me. So. For those of us that are on this board that are willing to release your cell number or whatever, however that goes, it might be worth sharing that amongst ourselves. Yeah. And if I can just say in the beginning of your binder is a contact information sheet. I saw that. So if you want to send that information to me, if you're willing to share your personal contact information, I can update this sheet and then send it out. Yeah. And that's not for the general public. No, no, no. No, maybe like have a private one or something. Like maybe we just pass it around, or I don't know how. Maybe like time, but it might be helpful. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Is there any other any other points that the uh, members of the committee wants to bring up? We will uh, adjourn. And yeah, thank you. No, we've already done public comments. So. Public is just for the committee members to put that. Are we adjourned? Yes, we're adjourned. All right.